So next up we have Shimon. Shimon is um, from Poland and he is one of the co-founders of CodeCoop, uh, a company doing a lot of work around uh, Bluetooth and, and, and consulting and also development of, of IoT devices. Um, yeah, he's an open source enthusiast and has been developing Linux uh, and BLE based systems for a long time now. And he's also one of the main maintainers of the um, Nimble BLE stack. And he will tell us now a little bit about Nimble and about the right integration of Nimble. And uh, after that, I will uh, introduce the, the Nimble, and uh, we will focus. No? Oh. Uh, so uh, I will start with an uh, introduction to the uh, Bluetooth Low Energy uh, technology, then a uh, short introduction to Nimble itself. And uh, uh, the features we support, uh, the systems we support, and what changed since uh, my last talk last year in Amsterdam, and uh, some uh, descriptions of things we call Nimble ports and how Riot fits into that, uh, what is supported on Riot, and what's uh, future work. Okay, so Bluetooth Low Energy. It's a uh, technology is uh, governed by an uh, organization called the Bluetooth Special Interest Group, BTC. Uh, basically, this organization uh, ties together uh, companies that uh, wants to use and develop the technology. And spec is released uh, every two, one, two years. So basically, the technology is evolving. Uh, now it's like almost 10 years. Um, every new spec uh, usually introduces uh, some new features, not only uh, minor improvement, but like uh, big features. For example, the last one is quite interesting because it, it, it adds a feature called uh, directional finding. So you can basically, uh, with a special radio, you can uh, find the direction of the device uh, with a few centimeters from uh, the uh, quality of the, of the direction finding. Okay, and comparing to old Bluetooth, uh, low energy is much simpler. Um, it's still short range, uh, typically like it's uh, a few dozens of meters, maybe 100 if you're lucky. Uh, outside you can get uh, almost one kilometer with a special setup. Uh, it operates on the IMS band, so you don't need any licenses uh, for a radio uh, to use that. It's designed for a low power devices, typically uh, battery operated. Um, the connection establishment is very fast if you want to. And uh, the modularization of the signal is very simple. Uh, so the transceiver and receiver are uh, simple devices. Uh, currently, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy supports three kind of uh, uh, pies. Uh, so you can have a one megabit, two megabit, and something called coded, uh, where one bit is encoded with uh, two or, or eight uh, uh, symbols. Uh, it uses a uh, time and frequency. Is combat. We have uh, 40 channels that are used uh, by Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, so how, how the, the stack as a technology looks like? Uh, usually it's, uh, it's uh, split by uh, uh, the host, uh, the host and, the, and the controller. The controller handles all the low level radio link, uh, like creating connection, finding device and stuff like that. The host implements uh, protocols and uh, higher level uh, profiles. And application is your end application that actually transmits some useful data. Uh, you can have a connectionless and uh, uh, connection oriented roles. Uh, so you can scan for devices, you can broadcast the data, or you can actually create the connections. Uh, security is provided by uh, encryption and authentication. So you can encrypt the link over the radio uh, and you can also authenticate uh, that device that, uh, that you are connected to is the uh, device you, you want to be connected to. Uh, general attribute profiles provide a high level um, set of attributes that you can read and write and all the profiles, the functionality provided by Bluetooth devices actually uh, done by this, uh, by, this uh, by, by utilizing this interface. 
it is a bit, uh, you can think about it as an um, Excel sheet that has a rows and you can basically read and write. And then wh when you have a profile, it basically describes how you read and write those, those characteristics. And uh, one thing that can be also used is uh, something called connection inter channels. And this is more like a pipe uh, that, that is a logical pipe that can be uh, used by an application, for example, uh, if you need to stream some big binary data like humor, uh, using the connection to the channel will be more efficient comparing to doing that on the GAP level. Uh, okay, so Apache Nimble. Uh, the project uh, originated as a part of the uh, Apache Minute, which is an embedded operating system from Apache Foundation. Uh, the license is very permissive, Apache. Zero. It's driven by a community under the Apache Software Foundation, so all the decision and release process is made according to the uh, ISF uh, uh, rules. All the code is on the GitHub. Uh, last month we released uh, 1.2 version. Usually we try to re do release every few months, so uh, things are more or less up to date. Uh, the stack is now qualified because when, when you want to use uh, Bluetooth stack in the real product with a Bluetooth sticker on it, uh, you have to qualify your device, which basically means that um, you certify that everything is working according to specification. Uh, the Nimble itself is operating system independent, so it's not tied to, uh, uh, to Minute. Uh, typically, it targets uh, devices that run on the microcontrollers, uh, but we also have a uh, running Linux code, so it's not a, a hard condition. And the memory footprint is pretty small. Uh, those are like sample numbers. Uh, of course, it depends on the configuration. You can go more uh, higher or you can go lower. This is like a typical configuration for a device that is, let's say, a half, half a monitor or something like that. Uh, what do we support in my new team? Uh, currently, we support uh, core specification 5.0. Uh, if your hardware supports it, uh, for example, NR52840 supports a coded pipe. So you can have all three uh, uh, radios if you want. Uh, we support something called advertising extensions, which is basically uh, a feature that allows to advertise big data. because. All the versions of uh, Bluetooth spec allow only 31 bytes of data being advertised in the broadcast message. Advertising extensions uh, allows to use uh, up to uh, 1600, which is a nice number because it beats uh, IPv6 packets. Uh, last, uh, <coughs> since last year, we added support for a feature from uh, Bluetooth 5.0 called periodic advertising. And periodic advertising is a uh, more power efficient uh, broadcasting, uh, broadcasting uh, feature that uh, allows devices to synchronize uh, with a periodic broadcast of other devices and then it is much more uh, power efficient compared to traditional advertising, but you first have to synchronize. Uh, we support uh, both advertising and synchronizing to periodic advertising uh, instances and also support multiple instances. So you can advertise multiple uh, periodic advertising and as well as you can synchronize to other, uh, to multiple devices that do this kind of advertising. Uh, the stack is low energy only. That means we don't support something called Bluetooth Classic, like uh, typical headphones or stuff like that. Uh, we support all uh, generic access profile features Generic access profile is a profile that defines uh, uh, how you connect and how you uh, decover the devices. So we support both central peripherals, so you can connect to other devices and uh, other devices can connect to you. Uh, you can also broadcast and uh, scan for broadcasts from other devices. We support a feature called privacy, uh, which basically protects a user uh, from being trackable. So that means uh, the address is change every 15 minutes by default, but this is uh, configurable. And the address, uh, to be able to figure out which address belongs to, to your device, you have to have a proper key. 
which is exchange if you want during the failing process. Uh, we offer support with GAT and AutoCAD oriented channels and we support something called proof of mesh, which is, uh, if you look at this slide, this is a kind of a separate specification uh, that is uh, out of basically a mesh networking uh, over Bluetooth. And that uh, uh, the mesh uh, code was ported from a Zephyr project, but we basically uh, provide features and updates uh, in both directions. Uh, okay, uh, now the stack features itself. It is uh, operating system independent. It runs on multiple OSs. I will get to that uh, in a moment. It is hardware uh, platform independent in, in a way that uh, if you have a radio that, that you are able to implement radio interface we require, you can run Bluetooth on top of that. Uh, currently, we support Nordic chips only. This is basically because uh, it's the only company that provides a uh, reasonable documentation so you can actually do that. Uh, but other versions are welcome <laughs> to open the, the, the hardware. Uh, we have a bunch of samples uh, applications <coughs> in the app folder that is uh, that are a good starting point uh, if you want to see uh, how how to use uh, mining stack. Uh, in the last year, we uh, implemented something called PT Tester, which is an application that is uh, used for automated test cases. Uh, sorry, for automated uh, testing. It basically allows uh, our test framework to control device and test the stack. Uh, a lot of effort was put to fix bugs which we had in the Nimble and uh, 1.2 release is fully qualified, which is a, a big deal actually. So the stack is fully qualified. There are two public uh, QPIPs, one for controller and one for host, including mesh. So you can actually start using Nimble for uh, like a real product if you want. And uh, the qualification was done for Bluetooth 5.0 with, I think, almost all, all features. I think only the uh, periodic advertising is not part of the uh, qualification that we have now. Okay, the Nimble ports. Uh, basically, uh, to support multiple OSs, we provided some abstraction layer on top of a basic uh, mechanism uh, from the OSs. So uh, we have uh, something called NPL, Nimble Porting Layer that the operating system needs to implement. And Riot is, uh, uh, of course, implementing that one. Uh, the interesting thing is that Ap Apache Minute itself is also uh, implementing this interface. So the, all, all the OSs are equal. There are no more equal OSs uh, in Nimble. And uh, the common code, so th there are some, of course, like uh, memory management stuff and things like that that are copied from, from Minute but they are internal to operating uh, to uh, Bluetooth stack, so application doesn't have to care about that one. Okay, so how uh, how Nimble integration in Riot it looks like? All the credits go to how okay, uh, uh, Riot works. So a disclaimer. Uh, so basically, uh, in the Nimble repository, we have a, a Riot implementation of the NPL, which is the so this is part of the of the Nimble code release, and uh, uh, besides that, uh, Riot is providing a package that uh, basically downloads the upstream uh, Nimble code and uh, allow uh, application to use that. Uh, what is nice is that I think currently there are no patches, right, on top of it. So Riot is using fully upstream version of, of Nimble. Uh, what works? All the core features of Nimble works uh, in the Riot, so you can uh, do everything Riot, uh, everything uh, Nimble supports uh, on Minute, you can do that on, uh, on Nimble. Uh, NR51 and 52 are supported. Uh, 51 was added uh, later due to memory constraints that Hafter was fighting. Uh, currently, uh, Bluetooth mesh support is in progress. It's working. Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, it should be uh, uh, available in a couple of weeks. What doesn't work yet on, uh, on a Riot is a speed, so-called speed configuration one where a <coughs> host and controller operates on a separate MCUs. But this is, uh, uh, if someone needs to add it, it's 
it's rather uh, trivial work to do if someone has a configuration that, that requires that. Maybe with a USB, this can be a, a more interesting point where you can have a control running on, on one uh, over the USB and then you can host. Um, by default on the Riot, uh, mining, uh, sorry, Nimble is enabled with a minimum configuration, so all the features that are optional are, are disabled and you have to opt in. Uh, and uh, there are a few sub-modules that basically wraps around the Nimble APIs for uh, easier uh, application writing, like uh, scanner, uh, device list, and sub-modules. And Riot is very good citizen. All the patches are upstream, so uh, that means uh, the support will be like, it will continue on it. It will not, not be dropped uh, in the near future. Uh, what was added since uh, my last presentation is uh, support for IP uh, over PLE. Uh, this is done by implementing the generate native uh, interface. Um, this code lies in the uh, native subfolder in the Nimble package. Uh, multiple connections are supported and the design of this is uh, asynchronous as the uh, Nimble API. So you basically get a call the function and then you get a callback the results. And there's a shell for testing that. Uh, IPSP is a profile in Bluetooth that basically <coughs> allows one device to detect that other device is supporting IP over uh, BLE. And this is tested with Linux. There's a readme that describes how you can test, that, test it. Uh, it's a bit clumsy because support on Linux is still uh, not very mature. Uh, it doesn't hit yet on NR51 due to RAM constraint because that, those devices have like 16 or 30, 32 uh, kilobytes of RAM. Uh, what's also new is uh, support for uh, named data networking over BLE. Uh, this is utilized in CCN Lite. Uh, in the, uh, and the, the cool feature thing about this is that it uses the same code as the uh, IP over BLE because it's the same native, so there's no like a special code for this. Uh, it's the first one, this is what I heard, uh, practical implementation of NDN over BLE, so uh, quite significant. Uh, okay, what, what we also did since, yeah, uh, I'll just, what we also did since uh, last year is that we put a lot of effort to improve our testing harness for the Nimble. So we have a lot of uh, tools created to automate it to test both controller and host. Uh, some of those are open source, uh, there are GitHub links, and those are using this BT tester application I mentioned uh, before. Future work, uh, this is like the last slide. <laughs> uh, so uh, we want to add more features from the Bluetooth uh, 5.1, more samples for easier uh, getting in people and uh, improve our tests a bit further because with Bluetooth War there's a lot of uh, IoT issues and we want to handle those. Uh, and of course, usual code sets reduction. There's always not enough flash and RAM on those devices. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. Uh, if you find the bug, if you want new feature, get us, uh, uh, get, get contact. Uh, everything is open. Uh, we use mailing list and Slack for communication. And uh, yeah, I encourage people to start using and maybe contribute. <laughs> Reporting a bug is also a contribution. <laughs> yeah, uh, if there are questions. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot for the update. Michael. Thank you, Simon. Um, so IP over Bluetooth, can you run Ripple? In both answer. The answer is yes. It does. We also tried it. Um, Shimon didn't mention it because I didn't tell him probably, but uh, at the ITF in Prague, um, Cenk and me, we actually did an implementation for Ripple over BLE, which is basically a com or it's using BLE as a transport, but one of the open things is always how to manage the connections, how to tell the devices to connect to each other, to open these link layer connections so you are able to do route over and all this stuff. 
And um, so our idea was, or there was actually a paper, so it was pre-worked by some other people which we implemented to actually use status information from Ripple to choose your kind of device you connect to. So you basically have the Ripple tree in your topology. So I guess one more question to... Hi. Um, yeah, I have a question about the qualification. Um, how does it work in practice? Uh, can I use the Riot product and use the Nimble package and then put the Bluetooth sticker on the box already? Uh, yes, with a small exclamation mark. As a uh, the thing is that uh, you can use UBID provided by the product, uh, but you still have to qualify your end product. So the, the thing is that you no longer need to qualify the controller and the host. So you need to qualify uh, profiles you want to use, for example, with heart rate or feed over gut, uh, if you want to do a mouse. And uh, then you, com you only test the profiles you implemented and combine uh, QDIDs provided by, uh, by the project to your product. Basically, uh, the heavy lifting is done in this host and controller qualification. Qualifying product, uh, profiles is uh, quite simple. Okay, one more. So uh, first, thanks for the IP layer. I'm still, I was waiting for this, so I have to try out this. Um, but uh, the meshing, I'm really, uh, this is also an interesting point. Um, I'm not really deep into this topic, but is it possible to map uh, IP version six to, uh, to mesh? Because I, I think it's not IP based, right? Uh, mm, no, so, well, basically Bluetooth mesh is not using advertising extensions I mentioned. So you are limited to 31 bytes of the one advertising packet. And basically, uh, mesh in Bluetooth is a flat base. So if you want to transmit uh, big data as big IP6 packet, it will take a while uh, to do that. And uh, the mesh itself, I don't think it's, uh, it's limiting you to the data you're transmitting. Uh, on top of mesh in Bluetooth, you have something called mesh model, which basically is more like a something you can think about as a profile over the mesh. So if you create one for, a, for IP over mesh, it should work, but it's not, it's not something that's currently like in the spec. No, no, the, the, the question was more about um, having, for example, a gateway or something which translates the IP packages to the mesh stuff. Uh, so I, I think this would be something custom now, if you want. Uh, there is something called a uh, proxy, which allows you to uh, connect the mesh to the network with a device that is not supporting mesh. So your phone can connect to a node with a normal Bluetooth connection, and that one node will act as a proxy to the rest of the network. Um. Yeah, thanks again for the talk. Thank you. <laughs> so.